So, hello everybody. I'm really glad to be with you today. So, I would like to talk about background cues. It's a very important topic in the Ruby world. And uh, first, I want to apologize because I'm a little bit sick. That's why I'm sitting right now. So, don't hesitate if I fell asleep, throw tomatoes or things like this. And uh, if I threw up on stage, it will be the best conference of the year. <laughs> Let's go. So first, let me introduce myself. I'm Salim. I'm a software engineer at Conto. Uh, so Conto is a bank. We are just sponsoring the event. And we are building everything in Ruby. So in the banking world, we went from COBOL to Ruby. That's kind of a, a huge gap. But it's happening right now in France. And uh, I've been Rubyist for quite a long time now. I started my career in 2008 uh, professionally in Ruby, and I've been enjoying the, the, the trip so far. So, as any talk about scalability, I made the offense to, to put you the, 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 the definition uh, from Wikipedia about scalability. And basically, it's just the, the property of a system to handle a growing amount of work by adding resources to the system. So now we'll try to see how it's uh, applied in the Ruby world, and especially on web application. So I'm sure you all heard about libraries like Sidekick or Rescue or Delayed Jobs. I think it's one of the most mentioned solutions when you hear about how to scale my web application, my Rails server. And uh, most of the time, if you look on the internet, you will see as an answer, just use background queues, use Sidekick, use Rescue. And uh, that's a really clever solution. It helps you uh, reduce the latency, so respond to requests in a shorter amount of time, and automatically increase the throughput as well, so that you can serve multiple requests, requests at the same time. So next step, how to scale my job queues. And uh, for this, I'm sure that this is a question that has not been asked a lot. And for a good reason is just by using Sidekick, you can go really, really far. But the thing is, the day when you will start having problems, like the latency will go higher and higher, I'm sure that you won't get prepared for this. For it happened to me like two years ago, and uh, I've been searching like for solution uh, ever since. So my first advice for this is like measure everything. The thing is, if you look at the Sidekick web interface right now, you, will, you won't find that many useful information. For sure, you will have the number of jobs that are enqueued right now, and the number of jobs that are failing, or the latency within queues. But the thing is, you won't have that many useful information to see what is failing currently in your system, in your queues. Uh, this is uh, uh, an example of what we are measuring uh, at Conto. So this is a dashboard, a Grafana dashboard used by one team. And uh, you can see here, we try to measure everything. The time spent in the job, the, the latency within queues, the number of jobs that are failing. The it helps bring uh, like a lot of uh, information. It's really a gold mine if you want to know what is currently happening on your system. And another funny thing is the day I took this screenshot, there was like zero dead job, which never happened ever. <laughs> so <laughs> that was the first time I was super glad. But if you look, it's on a time, uh, time frame of five minutes. So that's why <laughs> there is only zero. <laughs> so suddenly you will realize that your biggest problem is just head of line blocking. And uh, it's always the same thing when you're dealing with queues. It's always the same problem. It's like one job that is slow is uh, causing uh, a nightmare for your whole system. So it's the same thing if you have done network, uh, networking uh, programming in the past. You have the same kind of solutions for, for network router or things like this. And uh, when you encounter this problem, the first thing that you will try to do, the most obvious solution, first is to add more workers to the mix. By adding more workers, 
it means adding more machines and it means paying more. So that's an obvious solution as long as your bank account can scale. Can scale. I don't know for you, but it can get you fired uh, in, a, in a matter of time. <laughs> so that's not really a clever solution. It is for sure a solution that respects the definition that we have done because we're just adding more stuff in the mix, more resources, but uh, it has some limitations. Next step, adding more queues. Uh, one thing you realize is like you have critical jobs that needs to be handled right away, let's say payments for example, or you have uh, slow jobs because of a slow third party, slow networking that you want to put in their own, uh, in their own queues, just uh, you don't get bothered by them and their slow execution time. It's some solutions, it works at some point, but there are some limitations. And uh, for example, for more queues, uh, I'm sure you have uh, already set up a, a Sidekick server, and uh, this is the recommended setup for Sidekick. So you have three queues, the critical, the medium, and the low, uh, low criticity jobs. You just use three queues and you throw your jobs within these three. Uh, but whenever you start to have more and more problems, most of the time it will end up like this. You will have payments, you will have web books, analytics, and things like this. You realize that you have lost the control of your system when you have more than 100 queues with names like uh, provider name or uh, SLO name, let's say uh, one minute and queue time uh, queue or something like this, it gets really quick out of, a con out of control. And the funny thing is, this is basically how Sidekick works or Rescue works. It's just using Redis underneath and is using uh, this, uh, this primitive, the BR pop. Uh, it's just to pop a job outside of the outside of the, the list. So you give multiple queue names. Uh, on, the right, on the left hand side, you have the most critical. On the right hand side, you have the less criticals. And uh, the, Redis, uh, the, the Redis client will just uh, look for all these queues with uh, this order of priority. But the thing is, you will always encounter the same situation where the marketing team is sending a bunch of emails or one developer is backfilling a, a table and suddenly the, the most critical queues are, how do you say, are, are really full and the jobs that are living in the less priority queues, they are never enqueued. And that's a problem. That's where the latency goes crazy. Like at some point, we have jobs that were waiting more than two hours in, the, in our system. So it's not cool when you try to send a, an OTP, for example. It can get uh, you in trouble. So next step, is there any smarter solution? For sure, there are some. The first thing will be uh, some kind of auto-scaling feature just to increase the number of workers on demand and stop them whenever something, uh, uh, whenever the load is, le is way lower. So I've seen a lot of blog posts explaining this and it's really, really helpful to do this. It can really lower the, the barrier and uh, ensure the quality of service. Another solution is to, to add timeouts to your, to your job. Like uh, if you know that a third party is slow and will fail after 30 seconds, chances are high that you just want to fail after five seconds because it's not going to happen, it will never answer. Or even circuit break, something that is used uh, mostly at larger company. Just if you know that a third party is down, you don't need to throw HTTP calls to that third party uh, at all. It will fail anyway, so you just want to wait until the service is up again to, to send your jobs. But are there really smart solutions? I mean, uh, if you throw timeouts or secret break, you will just end up with a bunch of, uh, of dead jobs. And uh, the thing is, you will have to retry them and you will still uh, bring the system down again and again and again. And that's the story of my life. 
So this is a graph that uh, I've taken on uh, the new Relic APM. So this is an agent just to measure where the time is spent for your Ruby stack. So if you look at this, you will see the blue part here is just the time that, I, that is spent in the Ruby virtual machine. So it's where your processor is actually used. But what about the yellow and the green part? The yellow is just the time spent in Postgres, and the green part is the time spent in HTTP calls. So you can, I've put it, it's just pure waste. Your CPU is doing nothing. You're just waiting for IOs. You're just waiting to receive message or send message. But uh, I'm sure there is uh, an efficient solution to use this time uh, to do a better job and decrease the latency. And so what is the solution? The solution is called an event loop. This is the, the most used solution when you have slow IOs. It's what is powering uh, uh, Node.js, for example, or the Nginx web server. It's a really well-proven solution, and it has worked for years. So you have here an example of uh, an event loop where you have Bart Simpson playing against multiple opponents, playing chess, and the thing is, he's just way faster than, in op the, than his opponents, and he doesn't have to wait until they are ready to play to just take another task. This is basically the best definition of an event loop you will find uh, on Earth. <laughs> so, how to implement uh, an event loop in Ruby? Uh, this is kind of a tricky uh, question. Uh, uh, just one thing, sometimes it's called reactor pattern, so that's why I put this title. But uh, I'm sure you don't want to implement yourself because it's kind of hard to, imp to have it implemented. But there are some popular libraries, at least I know two of them. The first one is Event Machine, it has been there for a decade now, and it's uh, working really well. And the second one is the async framework. So this framework is kind of new, it has been uh, developed by some people, and uh, one of them is Samuel Williams from the Ruby core team, and it's getting more and more attention right now on, in the Ruby world. And why it's getting more and more attention? It's just because uh, this guy, Samuel Williams, just released uh, a year ago a web server called Falcon that is using async.io and event loops. And uh, it's written in pure Ruby, and uh, it's scaling way more than uh, Puma or Unicorn that are written uh, at least uh, for the biggest part in C. So how come we beat C in Ruby? That's the question. <laughs> and uh, this guy gave a talk last year uh, called Fibers are the right solution. So this is an example of a fiber. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with fibers, but it's a language construct that has been uh, in Ruby uh, since Ruby 1.9, but it's not really well used. To be really honest, I've been started to use uh, fibers this year only. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, this is uh, the interesting part in this code. It's the yield command. So a fiber is just a language construct just to control the flow. You can enter a fiber, pause it, and resume it. So you have an example with the factorial thing, and it's keeping the, the state. Each time you're resuming, uh, it keeps the state that it has uh, later, uh, in the past, sorry. Uh, so it's working really efficiently. You feel that your code is sequential, but it's not, actually. It's like a thread, but you have the, 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 the total control of the scheduling. It's not handled by the Ruby virtual machine, but by you. And uh, so this guy, Samuel Williams, just stated that fibers are the right solution because they're lighter than threads. You can spawn millions of them, whereas you can spawn just thousands of threads. So you can achieve way more scalability than with threads. And it's also safer than threads because you don't have to deal with uh, 
synchronization primitives, mutexes, data race, and all the, the nightmare that comes with, uh, with threads. So, how do we implement a sidekick like with, uh, with fibers? Uh, how we achieve like non-blocking IOs. The first thing is whenever you need to do uh, an IO, let's say communication with a web server, you will just yield when you start communicating with the server. Then you put this IO object, the file descriptor, into a monitoring list. Most of the time it's the kernel that will monitor your uh, the availability of the, the data that you need for your service to work. And then, when the data is ready, you just resume the, the fiber. So that's how you achieve async IOs in Ruby. This is an event loop, but really, really, really simplified. So, what if we apply this to the sidekick uh, rescue thing? This is an example of code it's basically sidekick, but with no error management. So the first thing you see is that the whole code is wrapped in an async, uh, async block. Uh, this is what will start the event loop, to start monitoring for IOs and put them and resume them uh, whenever they are ready. And then after this, we just pop a job from a queue, we parse it, we deserialize it, and then we run it. This is a really efficient sidekick version with no error management. Again, don't use it in production. <laughs> but if you look at this code, there is one problem. I'm not sure if you have seen it, but it's this line. We are using the Redis library, and the, uh, the official Redis library is not really aware of uh, sidekick, uh, no, not sidekick, uh, about the fibers and the event-driven uh, IOs. So it won't yield whenever it encounters a blocking uh, situation. So if you try with this, it won't work. It will be just, you will just be able to, to, to pop one job and perform one job at a time. So it's not really uh, the concurrent thing that we wanted to build. But actually, there is a solution. You won't like it, <laughs> but whenever you have to handle async things, you have to, to have replacements for the, the, the libraries you, you use on a daily basis. So the good news here is that there is a replacement for every library that are used uh, in the Ruby world and that, that, that are popular in the Ruby world. Let's say the Redis, there is its equivalent in uh, which is called async redis the uh, a rest client you have an http uh, async http lib which is uh, able to handle http1 and http2 connection i'm hoping that the http3 will come soon and the last one is the async postgres which is the much used database uh, today but i think there is also adapters for mysql and many other databases so this is the thing there, uh, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. There is always a, pra a, a price to pay. But does it worth it? Uh, does a solution like this could be helpful in, for the, the problem that I just described? Let's have a look. So first thing, I've developed a little library called Quick, uh, which is just a a sidekick replacement. Not really a replacement, based because it's not really battle-tested, but uh, it claims to, to be a replacement somewhere in the future. So it's using, uh, like sidekick or rescue, it's using Redis underneath, and it's, uh, you can use it with active job as well. So you can just put the integration in your Rails app and it will work as, uh, as it works with, uh, with sidekick. And it looks really, really promising. Here, I've written a test script that is just enqueuing 10,000 jobs. And uh, within each job, we just sleep for one second. So when I launch this script on my, uh, on my computer, this Mac, I'm able to, to perform the 10,000 jobs in uh, about eight seconds. So one thread, eight seconds. 
what about uh, what if I tried this exact same experience with, uh, with Sidekick? So with Sidekick, with 10 threads, you will be able to process everything in 1,000 seconds. So about 16 minutes. So this is the proof that it's really, really, really the, the best solution to handle like uh, uh, asynchronous I.O. Uh, and uh, a lot of concurrency in, within your system. It's about 125 times faster, which is huge. But beware with numbers. <laughs> Don't trust the numbers that you, <laughs> that you have in conferences. <laughs> But actually, uh, in those eight seconds, I think there are two seconds that are spent just to, to boot uh, the Rails application. So it's more six seconds in real life. Next, what about the future? So Matt this morning talked about Ruby 3 and said that it was the year of concurrency. So I know for sure that there is uh, some, some discussions around guilds. I'm sure it's called Guilds or Giles, I don't know how it's pronounced, Guilds, okay? Just to have parallelism. But there are also some discussions about uh, what's, what is called autofibers or thread light or threadlet or whatever. And I'm sure I recall uh, uh, a, bug, uh, a, a bug in, uh, in Redmine where you said, uh, I'm sure that... Uh, I've heard that big companies are waiting for solutions for IOs, slow IOs, and that's exactly the case. We need to have this uh, kind of solutions in Ruby. So I'm just begging. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but uh, thread light could be really cool. It's like uh, basically the go routine for people that are familiar with Golang. And uh, you can follow all the discussions on this uh, bug ticket, this one with the link. And that's it for me. If you want to get involved, don't hesitate to just check out the GitHub project. And, uh, and it's really early stage. You can, you can work with us to try to, to fix this. That's it for me. So, if there is a few questions, yeah, oh. I think I've got a mic. Combien de temps? So, to take it, if you're using uh, Quick. To yeah. take advantage of the async um, functionality, all of the I.O. you do in all of your jobs has to also be using the async replacements, right? So all the HTTP or database access. Exactly. Right. But the thing is, uh, actually for my situation, uh, most of the slow I.O.s that I, uh, I've encountered, it's much more third-party providers with REST APIs that are slow. So I don't need to, to tweak my database, for example, but for sure the, the HTTP calls. Uh, I'm working in a bank. We are calling like uh, hundreds of, uh, of providers for everything, uh, fighting against fraud, against terrorism, things like this. And we have to call many databases that are on the internet. And uh, that's where the latency is. So I'm just planning to use the, the HTTP thing and the Redis thing as well, just because it's uh, what's power, powering the, the quick library. But yes, you, if you want to have a total uh, async uh, job, you have to replace everything that is doing IOs. Exactly the problem that you see in, uh, in, uh, in Node.js, for example. Or, yeah, that's, the, that's a big price. This. Can you use uh, async HTTP instead of HTTP in a normal project? It won't uh, 
Cause bugs? Uh, you, they are working right now. I, I'm not sure I understand the because question. Because if yes, uh, we could imagine that some some time in the future, all the libraries will be async proof. Uh, if it has no downside to use them in a non-async. Uh, the thing is, uh, I, I really like this framework, the async framework. I'm not sure. I don't know if you're familiar with the Node.js ecosystem or Python ecosystem where you have basically async await or callbacks everywhere. Here, the, the, the beauty of the solution is like you just have to wrap your code inside an async block. Uh, so you don't have to change everything in your code. You just put your code inside that block. And uh, if you're using async aware libraries, like the one I mentioned, it will work right away. And it will it won't uh, create bugs, and you wouldn't have to declare callbacks or put await statements everywhere in your code. So that's why I prefer this uh, compared to event machine, for example. I just can make my, my existing code uh, asynchronous uh, right away. But yeah, it's still kind of new. So, for example, if you're using the Redis uh, library, there are still some bugs, a lack of documentation, but we are working on it right now. We are opening PR and fixing bugs. But it does work. I've seen it work, and it's cool. Actually. Hi, I just wanted to ask, uh, how does it compare in terms of memory usage uh, with Sidekick? Have you done some ben benchmarks? Not really yet. <laughs> uh, I think uh, it takes for sure more memory, just because it's trying to instantiate more, much more uh, objects at the same time, just because of the async nature. But uh, right now, I didn't have that many problems. But the thing is, when I did this uh, performance script, I've seen that uh, the overhead of Psychic uh, is really, really low. The thing is, uh, when I said I, uh, I create 10 threads and I see how long it takes to perform 10,000 jobs, the async library, uh, uh, the, the Psychic library is just really uh, doing everything in uh, 1,000 seconds plus uh, just a few milliseconds. So the overhead is not that big. Uh, if you compare with Quick, Quick normally it should enqueue everything and finish everything around uh, one second, because we are just waiting one second, but it takes much more. Uh, so there is an overhead, and I'm, I'm sure that it's because of the memory pressure. Uh, just because there is some garbage collections, things like this, and it's really uh, uh, creating much more objects at the same time, putting more pressure on the virtual machine. So I have no answers right now, but uh, I will try to find some. Thank you. Um, are those um, async libraries uh, newly built libraries from scratch uh, that's compatible with the original libraries or they are monkey patching the original libraries? Uh, most of them are just using the same interface so that you don't have to change your code. Uh, but right now we lack completeness on some of them. Let's say the Redis library, for example, the feature set is, uh, is not the one from the official library. I think I've seen a, a pull request about uh, just having an adapter for the async framework, but I'm not sure if it has been merged. So just uh, replace the I.O. Uh, uh, handling in the official uh, Redis library instead of creating a new, a new library. Kind of something that is popular in the Python world we have uh, most of the libraries that are uh, separating IOs from uh, the actual service just to be able to benefit from uh, async, uh, async things. One last question. Oops. 
Yeah. Actually, it's not the question, but the answer. And, uh, we are going to uh, in introduce the, the Fiverr things. Yeah. Uh, we are not. Thank you. Yeah, we are not going to name it out of Fiverr, no other things. But the, the, tip, uh, the traditional Fiverr uh, with the, the certain mode of the, the asynchronous I/O mode or something okay. like that. Cool. That we are going to add a several, several methods to behave like uh, the auto fiber things <laughs> to, to support the, the things. But uh, we will have it in, in Ruby 3. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you.